222 day, we will be talking about Velo and Axelar and how Stellar and Ripple are also involved. I haven't really talked about Axelar a whole lot, but it's essentially an interoperability centric network that is connected into about 70 different networks, including the XRPL, Stellar, and Velo. Velo has been talking about interoperability for a while now. And they have formally called out a multi-chain and multi-asset bridge as of late 2023. And that partnership has already resulted in over $4 billion in volume on Squid Router. We will also talk about EveryNet, which is a topic that I haven't gotten to yet and how it can potentially connect into pretty much everything here and tie that into Project Embridge. Here is an example of the 1.7 quadrillion cross-chain opportunity. What other products do you see Archax kind of being interested in or getting involved with in the, in the future? In our analysis of global financial markets, we think the opportunity is $1.7 quadrillion. So it's $1,700 trillion. If you add up everything, it's a massive opportunity. And all of that can be tokenized and all of it will be tokenized because it's a more, a more efficient way to handle financial instruments. It's a more efficient way to run financial markets. But it just makes so much sense for, for a myriad of reasons. So it's coming. And I actually take that back. That was not Axelar speaking, but they did refer to that 1.7 quadrillion cross chain opportunity. As of late 2024, Velo began to post about not only Stellar, which would make sense because they are a L2 on Stellar and Jed McCaleb and David Mazieres are called out as advisors, but they also surprisingly began to talk about Ripple and XRP. And I had speculated on Velo, Ripple and Stellar connections into Project Embridge in early 2024 and it actually caught the attention of Velo and got reposted in their Telegram. And the timing of it was all pretty coincidental because at around that same time, you also had Axelar talking about Ripple and the XRPL, which is shown here. And this particular tweet is from February 8th of 2025. Here is a clip that is specifically explaining MCBDCs. Now, I have speculated that it could involve them, it could involve Stellar, and it could involve Velo as well. Central Bank, including access approval rights to onboard selected domestic commercial banks and the ability to set transaction limits and parameters such as the maximum amount they can hold in their wallet or transact in a single cross-border payment. Central banks can also set alerts for foreign exchange rates. So I'll get to Project Embridge here in a little bit, but a little bit more on Axelar and Velo first. So that working partnership with Velo, Axelar, and Squid Router has been implemented in their universe trading app and it now involves cross-chain OTC swaps as well. And I should say as of late 2023 again, which is a really good example of how Velo, Stellar, and Axelar are combining into a potentially significant cross-chain system of different networks that all connect into each other, but are also able to connect into different public and private networks individually. The Axelar network just recently went through an upgrade, which is the Cobalt network, and it changed the tokenomics and the scalability. I won't go too far into it here, but it passed a vote in February, and they're referring to it as an infinite interoperability scaling upgrade which is significant for the potential price of the AXL token itself, that could potentially have a quick and significant impact on the price. I have talked about Stellar and Axelar explicitly in the Meridian 2023 or 2024 conference that Stellar has. They were actually talking about really using Stellar's smart contracts within the Axelar network itself. So there could potentially be a lot of interchain cross-network smart contract capability 
that comes from Axelar that will rely on Stellar and the XLM token in order to execute. Here we get a little bit more into Velo, EveryNet, and Project Embridge. So Robert Townsend is one of the advisors for Velo, and he has a lot of experience at MIT in these cryptographic networks and specifically to Southeast Asia. And in his paper here, he plainly states that he has collaborated with not only the Federal Reserve, but Velo for the decentralized settlement banking network and EveryNet for the decentralized custodian banking network in Thailand. I've been wanting to talk about EveryNet for a while now, and it actually started with NovaChain, and they have become more integrated. However, the key is NovaChain, aka EveryNet, or what can be referred to as Velo in a more simplistic sense because they are key in the Velo network. It is a private chain that is able to connect private institutions, trading systems, and whatever else into public chains like Stellar and Solana. And the public-private hybrid will really be, in my own opinion, how the new financial infrastructure is actually structured because all of these private institutions don't want to have every piece of information publicly available, but they will want to be able to use their own information and interact with that on widely adopted and scalable public chains in order to interconnect into pretty much anything. Before we get to Project Embridge, the Velo and Stellar history is really important here, specific to our topic. And that's really because of all of the commonalities. You've got Dead Caleb on the board. You have common partners like Hashkey. The real important one specific to every net is probably LightNet. And that is because LightNet was essentially the end result of the chain of acquisitions that led to Stellar being essentially one and the same as Velo. And it just so happens that Stellar is within the partner network of EveryNet. And he and David Mazieres are also on their board of advisors. In early 2025, there was some increased volume and increased action on the Nova chain. And there was some speculation that might not be as clear speculation now because of all of the political hurdles and stalling in Thailand. But it lines up with the potential institutional integration. And a couple of months after that, there were some observations that looked like Nova Chain had changed. And it was an API into the Ethereum network, which is significant because Velo operates Nova Chain, which is an EVM compatible chain. That chain's fees is paid in Nova tokens, which don't have any value. The Nova token has been used within Orbit and Velo's universe application. So what could it potentially be for? Well, it could be related to the gold project that Velo and Solana are involved in, or it could relate to the existing need for increased interconnectivity with Ethereum. And that could be because of ties that go back in to every net. So it turns out that they are heavily involved with Solana and Stellar and Velo have each been posting some more direct and indirect connections, tying more and more into Solana. So it looks like in 2023, Velo and EveryNet essentially combined. So there are some connections into possible ties into the infrastructure of Project Embridge. In terms of Velo and the smart Contracts are deployed on every net, which uses a Byzantine fault tolerant consensus that is like Stellar's. 
and that makes it more efficient. So with the direct Stellar involvement in EveryNet, that kind of puts Velo and Stellar into Project Enbridge territory. And that is much more clearly called out here because it says Velo tokens, as well as all digital credits, which are like stable coins, are all on Stellar. And it clearly calls out Velo and Stellar within EveryNet's smart contract here, which begins to make even more sense because in Velo's Warp app, it did refer to NovaChain, and that has been replaced with EveryNet. And I have shown how Stellar and Binance are each involved with the UN. It looks as if there are some Velo transactions via EveryNet in the Hong Kong Velo quote unquote stablecoin. And to get back to the tech and how that can tie into Embridge, the Embridge ledger is written in Solidity. And that is what the EVM is written in. And since EveryNet is a fork of Ethereum, and since we know Velo and Stellar use EveryNet, it sounds like that's one more connection into Project Embridge. And sometime in 2023, there were some reports that Project Embridge transitioned to dashing, which is a protocol thing, not exactly clear on that. And it's just referred to as an upgrade from an already BFT consensus in an environment derived from Ethereum, which is what every net is, and it combines Stellar and Velo. And I did include some XRP related speculation into that Velo and Project Embridge. It seems as if the large differences in between Nova Chain, EveryNet, and the XRPL is how it ties in to institutions. The XRPL requires private ledgers that are connected into ILP. Nova is able to connect into institutions through APIs and does not require an institution to, to commit to create their entire network with only one pipeline. With that said, the common tie in between Ripple and Velo at this point is primarily Axelar, and there has been a lot of talk about Ripple and Axelar on its own. To this point, like two and a half years later, after Axelar launched, there's not a single other decentralized interoperability layer in the space, right? Everyone is still describing how they're going to decentralize later, but it'll be only one, right? And I think it's because from day one, we understood it's going to be a hard problem, and we understood there's going to be like trillions of dollars at stake, right? And like, we do a lot of work with financial institutions, and as we talk to those folks, they're like, yeah, but can we trust your technology, right? Because there's all these hacks, and if we want to put trillions of dollars on this technology, like, I'm taking a risk. To